The April 13, 2010 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? President Adair. Here. Ms. Andrews. Mr. Antelli. Mr. Antelli. Mr. Barker. Here. Mr. Beebe. Yeah. Mr. Bronson. Here. Mr. Cassetti. Here. Mr. Colby. Here. Mr. Daniele. Here. Mrs. Draw. Yeah. Mr. Echo. Here. Mr. Esposito. Here. Mr. Gamble. Here. Mr. Gamina. Here. Mr. Haney. Yeah. Mr. Hanna. Here. Mr. Hyder. Here. Mr. Holland. Miss Kaylee is excused. Mr. Lee. Here. Mr. Lightfoot. Mr. Monero. Here. Mr. McCann. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Dr. Quattro. Here. Mr. Rocco. Here. Mr. Tucciarello. Here. Mrs. Valerio. Here. Mr. Yolovich. Please stay seated. I would like to introduce the Pastor David C. O'Rourke from the Adams Street Church of God by Faith, who has been invited tonight by Legislator Willie J. Lightfoot. Most gracious and holy Father, in the name of Jesus, we come right now, O oh God, and we ask your blessings upon this uh, meeting. We ask your blessings upon these legislators. Ask you, O oh God, guide this meeting, Lord. We need your input. We need your wisdom. We need your direction, Lord. And I ask you, O oh God, give them direction, Lord, because we are in trouble, O oh God, and we need you, Lord. You told us, I uh, said, pray for your president. Pray for your leaders, O oh God. And now we are here, Lord, praying for those that are making rules and making laws, O oh God, for, for your people. And I ask you to bless them right now. Bless this meeting. Bless the leaders. In the name of Jesus, we ask these blessings. Amen. 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 Thank you. Pastor, on behalf of the Monroe County Legislature, I want to say thank you and give you a certificate. Thank you. Okay. Thanks again. Legislator Edwin o, Edward Owen Bryan will now lead the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. Without objection, we will now take agenda item number 58 out of the regular order. Agenda item number 58 is moved by Mr. Quattro, second by Mr. Bronson. Will the clerk please re read the resolution of memorial for Giacomo Perna, father of legislator Mary A. Valerio. Mrs. Rossi. Expressing regret of the Monroe County Legislature on the recent passing of Giacomo Perna. Be it resolved that the Monroe County Legislature hereby expresses its deep sympathy at the recent passing of Giacomo Perna, father of legislator Mary A. Valerio. And whereas Giacomo passed away at age 96 on Saturday, April 3rd, 2010, and whereas Giacomo will always be remembered as a man dedicated to his family and his community, Giacomo was the owner and founder of Perna Homes Incorporated, a very successful small business in the Chilai community where he resided. And whereas Giacomo was a devoted family man, he is survived by his children, Mary A. Valerio, James Perna, and John Perna, and his grandchildren, James, Mark, Matthew, Samuel, Nicholas, J Jason, Ryan, Jonathan, and Anthony. And whereas Giacomo will long be remembered for his leadership and his contributions to our community, be it further resolved that the clerk of the legislature is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the bereaved family. This resolution was adopted with each legislator rising in his or her place for a moment silence. Please 
continue to remain standing. Without objection, we will take agenda item number 15 out of its regular order. Agenda item number 59 is moved by Mr. Quattro, seconded by Mr. Bronson. Will the clerk please read the resolution of memoriam for the Honorable Peter J. McDonoghue, former Monroe County Legislator and Mayor of Fairport. Expressing regret of the Monroe County Legislature on the recent passing of Peter J. McDonoghue. Be it resolved that the Monroe County Legislature hereby expresses its deep sympathy at the recent passing of Peter McDonoghue, former member of the Monroe County Legislature. And whereas Peter passed away at age 83 on Friday, March 26, 2010, and whereas Peter will always be remembered as a spirited man dedicated to public service and his community. He served as the mayor of Fairport and as a Monroe County legislator representing the 11th legislative district. And whereas Peter was a fiery advocate for the residents of Fairport, he once resolved a budget in passe regarding federal funds to repair road work intersecting the railway passing through Fairport by threatening to park snow plows on the tracks. And whereas in his later years, he continued his service to the public in a teaching position with the State University of New York at Empire State College, where he used his public service experience and educational background as a student of St. John's and New York universities to educate students in the field of marketing. And whereas Peter is survived by his wife, Bernadette, and his seven children, Bernadette McDonoghue Canfield, Mary Margaret, Peter, James, and Thomas McDonoghue, Catherine Kaminsky, and Tricia Ryan, as well as his 14 grandchildren. And whereas Peter will long be remembered for his leadership and his contribution to our community. And be it further resolved that the clerk of the legislature is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the bereaved family. This resolution was adopted with each legislator rising in his or her place for a moment of silence. Please be seated. I would like to um, take this time to uh, recognize one of our people from our family, um, Legislator Esposito and his wife Jennifer. I would like to congratulate you on the birth yesterday of your daughter, Avery Lynn. <laughs> Being the father of two daughters, I will tell you, good luck. You have all received a copy of the journal for day four, March 9th, 2010. Without exception, the journal will stand approved as submitted. There is a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those with hearing impaired. Anyone requiring assistance should inquire in the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or other electronic device in your possession, we would request that you silence them for the duration of the meeting. Thank you for your cooperation. Legislature, the referrals submitted to the legislature for the next committee cycles are in your folders. This evening, there are several proclamations scheduled. Madam Clerk. Would the Rush Henrietta varsity basketball team and their coaches please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and Legislator John Howlett. Whereas the Rush Henrietta Royal Comets won the Section 5 Class AA-1 Championship, the basketball team was led by Coach Chris Reed and a strong lineup of talent. 
The games throughout the spectacular season were impressive and led to the team winning this championship and moving the team to the state qualifier. And whereas the Royal Comets have displayed their talent all season long with inspiration coming from Coach Reed, strong defense and aggressive offensive consistently led this team to victory. When it came time to step up, each member of the team did so, and the Royal Comets were able to capture the sectional title for their community. And whereas the dedication this team showed throughout their season was admirable, they have represented our community with great pride. The future is bright for these young athletes. And whereas each team member put forth great effort, which led to their come from behind win for the championship, both the towns of Rush and Henrietta, as well as all of Monroe County, are proud to have such a successful team representing the community. Now therefore we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, and John J. Holland, Legislator District 13, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate the Rush Henrietta Boys basketball team on clinching the sec Section 5 Class AA1 Basketball Championship. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, I would just like to say we're honored to be here tonight. Uh, we have a great group of kids that represented their school and their community in a first class way and it was a pleasure to be their coach. So again, thank you so much for having us here tonight. Thank you. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Congratulations. 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 Nice job. Nice job. Thanks for the warm-up. <laughs> you got a primo seat here. You get to see like what I Would Ronald see. Belzac, Riga historian, please come forward? Okay. Also, yeah, President Adair and legislator Robert J. Colby. Whereas over the years, Ron Belzac has dedicated himself to preserving the history of the town of Riga and the village of Churchville. And whereas for the village of Churchville's bicentennial, Ron was chosen to lead the celebration's organizing committee, which included commissioning a bicentennial coin and arranging a wide variety of celebration activities, including an opening ceremony, a dinner theater, a golf tournament, and a closing ceremony headlined by area church choirs and concluding with fireworks. And whereas in 2007, Ron was recognized by the Churchville Riga Chamber of Commerce as the citizen of the year for his community service. This recognition is well deserved and his hard work is appreciated by all of Monroe County. And whereas Ron's service to the town of Riga and the village of Churchville will greatly benefit generations to come as they look back on their town's history and share the pride of living in this community. Now therefore we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, and Robert J. Colby, Legislator District 20, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate Ronald Belzac in recognition of his contributions to the Churchville Bicentennial Celebrations. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. I just want to take a short uh, minute here. It would take too long to thank all those individuals and organizations that made this special event so possible. But with all events, I'd like to thank the unsung heroes in the back, my wife, Carol, and my daughter, Jennifer. I'd like to thank Mr. Colby for all his efforts, and I promise to take him off of my speed dial on the phone. <laughs> And I'd also like to thank a very special thanks to your Parks and Recreation Department. They were fantastic. Uh, we really don't understand how much we value them unless we have to need their expertise. So with that, folks, thank you very much.
Would Michael Kennedy and Drew Tiagi please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislators Michael G. Barker and Kieran T. Hanna. Whereas Drew Tiagi has won his second consecutive state diving championship at the New York State Swimming Meet, making him the third Section 5 diver in the past 15 years to win back-to-back -back state titles. Drew's score of 600.95 was the second highest all-time at the state meet, which was also 92 points higher than the second place finisher. And whereas Drew's dedication throughout this season has been impressive, he has worked many hours with coach Mike Kennedy to perfect his performance. With Coach Kennedy's direction, Drew has developed his talent, which has secured him a scholarship to Stanford University. And whereas, Drew has also been awarded the Federation Diving title this year. This title includes competitive scores from schools in New York City and the Catholic High School Association. And whereas, Drew Tiagi has worked hard over the years and it has paid off. He has been a great role model for his peers at Fairport High School. We wish him the best of luck in the future. Now, therefore, we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Michael G. Barker, Vice President, Kieran T. Hanna, Legislator, District 18, and on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate Drew Tiagi on winning his second consecutive state diving championship. to thank everyone for taking the time out this evening to recognize some outstanding young people in our community. It's a privilege to work with such an outstanding person, student, and athlete that Drew is. Thank you very much. Elaine McGurk and the Fairport cheerleaders please come forward. Also President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislators Michael G. Barker and Kieran T. Hanna. Whereas cheerleading requires its athletes to have dedication as well as perseverance. These, th these are two of the many skills found among the Fairport High School cheerleaders. The young athletes of the Fairport cheerleading squad have tremendous ability, clearly displayed throughout their excellent season led by the talented coach Elaine McGurk. The members of this squad have worked diligently this season and have won the Section 5 title as well as the American Open National Competition in Orlando, Florida. The squad ended the season undefeated for the first time in team history. And whereas the Red Raiders are a team made up of a strong group of seniors and won the team crown in the super large varsity division and were also named grand high school champion after compiling the highest score among all competing high school squads. And whereas the Fairport High School cheerleading squad proudly represented their school as well as their community. Each and every team member should be proud of their memorable undefeated 2010 season. Monroe County is pleased to have such young athletes within our community. Lessons learned in athletics can often translate into success later in life, and we are confident that the members of this team will continue to be model citizens for the Fairport community, as well as Monroe County as a whole. Now, therefore, we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Michael G. Barker, Vice President, and Kieran T. Hanna, Legislator, District 18, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate the Fairport cheerleaders on an undefeated 2010 season. Thank you very much. I'm going to introduce um, three of my captains. One is not here. 
this evening, uh, Mrs. Heather Pike, Megan Kennedy, and Marcy Dunlap, and now introduce the rest of our team. Um, my team and I would just like to thank you for honoring us tonight, and my fellow captains are going to introduce the team. All right, starting out with Kelsey Acosta, um, Chelsea Barker, Rachel Breeze, Jillian Carter, Sammy Cerrone, Kaylee Dianetti, Amanda Doolin, um, Marcy, Michelle Falcone, Sarah, Fal Sarah Falkowitz, Brittany Fetterman, Emily Foley, Dana Gostomsky, Megan Grace, Ellie Heyer, Lexi Hernandez, Lauren Howerhand, Courtney Hewitt, Megan, Chelsea LaCour, Erin McGuire, Emily Monnet, Kelly Mila, Sydney Nagel, Sophia Nobrega, Caitlin Patachi, Heather, Maggie Thaler, Casey Slade, Cassie Vandwell, Jamie Woods, Haley Wears, and Shaylee Yeager. Would Bill Joyce please come forward? Also, President Adair and legislators Rick Antelli, Jeffrey McCann, Mark Cassetti, and Dick Beebe. Whereas Bill Joyce has dedicated over 56,000 hours to the Greece community through his active involvement with the Greece Volunteer Ambulance, for 39 years, Bill has put others before himself. He has been very active in the emergency medical services community through various organizations, including MELREMS, REMAC, and STEP. And whereas Bill has helped many people throughout the years, he volunteered to provide emergency medical care to New York City after the September 11, 2001 attacks. He also assisted in India after, after the tsunami struck and in Haiti after the devastating earthquake. And whereas Bill has many other roles in different volunteer capacities, he is a volunteer medic for the LPGA Tour and Special Olympics, a member of the Monroe County Critical Incident Stress Management Team, Commissioner for the Lakeshore Fire District, and an Interval Volunteer, a local Rochester group that collects medical supplies from area hospitals and facilities to make them available for use locally and internationally. Bill is an exemplary citizen and a role model to others. Now therefore we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Rick Antelli, Legislator District 7, Jeffrey L. McCann, Legislator District 18, Mark J. Cassetti, Legislator District 5, and Richard Beebe, Legislator District 6, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby recognize and congratulate Bill Joyce for the outstanding service he has provided Monroe County for 39 years. Congratulations. <laughs> Much I can say, but thank you to, uh, to support my family basically for all this. Uh, I couldn't do it without them. And uh, I ask you to please at this time pray for the people in Haiti. Uh, they really need your help and support. The Rochester community has been very, very good to uh, the people in Haiti, and they should be proud to be a citizen of Rochester, New York. But uh, we, they continue to need our help, even though it's not in the media anymore. It's, uh, it's still front page news uh, all over the world. So please uh, keep these people in your thoughts and prayers, and thank you for this award.
would Chris Cardone of the Irondequoit High School men's basketball team please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislators Vincent Esposito, Edward O'Brien, and C. Stephen Eckel. Whereas for 25 years, varsity basketball coach Chris Carden has served as coach, mentor, friend, and confidant to hundreds of students at Irondequoit High School. And whereas, starting his coaching career at East Ridge High School during the 1983-1984 season, Chris soon joined rival Irondequoit High School's coaching staff as junior varsity coach before landing the varsity position. With the support of his family, Chris has helped to bring many successful seasons home for the Eagles. And whereas, the Eagles ended their 2009-2010 season with 16 wins to three losses, impressive by any standard. Chris has also been recognized as Section 5, Class AA2 Coach of the Year for his leadership and determination this past season. And whereas, the, in February 2010, Coach Carden won his 300th game as a Rondequoit High School varsity coach. It is with little doubt that under the direction of Coach, coach Carden, the Rondequoit High School team will continue to exceed expectations through several more winning seasons. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Vincent J. Esposito, Legislator District 16, Ted O'Brien, Legislator District 17, and C. Stephen Echo, Legislator District 26, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby honor Coach Chris Carden on his successful 2009-2010 season and career accomplishments. I'd like to congratulate Coach Farley back there with a the great season for East High representatives in the state very well. Um, this, this honor is, seems individual, like an individual honor, but it's really an honor shared by all the players that have coached, all the coaches that have put a lot of time in, and a lot of the parents that have put a lot of efforts in and raising their kids the right way. Um, somebody told me the other day, you're really lucky that you're a teacher. And I go, you're right, I am. And uh, I'm lucky to be here tonight, and I really thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Catherine Smith and Sula Baxter, co-president of the Rochester Metro League of Women Voters, please come forward. Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislators E. Daniel Quattro, Harry B. Bronson, and Carrie M. Andrews. Whereas, the League of Women Voters was founded in 1920 by Carrie Chapman Catt, just six months before the ratification of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and since that time has served as an activist, grassroots organization that focuses on citizen advocacy at the local, state, and national levels. And whereas, the strictly nonpartisan but wholeheartedly political organization encourages informed and active participation of citizens in government, and it influences public policy through education and advocacy. Open to all citizens of voting age, the League encourages everyone to register and cast their ballots as an informed electorate. And whereas, with over 900 Leagues active in every state in the country, members participate in voter registration, provide nonpartisan voter information, moderate candidate debates, and advocate for campaign finance reform. The League's standing committees cover a multitude of issues from social policy to local government and voter services. While the League's legislative priorities may change to reflect the needs of society, they remain steadfast in their dedication to make democracy work for all citizens. And whereas locally, the Rochester Metro League of Women Voters was established in 1925 and sponsors studies in conjunction with the Center of Governmental Research, participates in naturalization ceremonies, conducts the Fair Election Campaign Practices Initiative, 
hosts foreign delegations and provides publications such as Who Represents You, a listing of all public officials representing the area, and The Voter, a monthly newsletter. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, Harry B. Bronson, Democratic Minority Leader, B. Daniel Quattro, Majority Leader, and Carrie M. Andrews, Assistant Minority Leader, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby honor the Rochester Metro League of Women Voters on the celebration of their 85th anniversary. Thank you. The League of Women Voters Rochester Metro Area is most appreciative of your recognition of our work over the last 85 years. We're a volunteer organization that know how diligent all of you members of the legislature and the two commissioners of election work to encourage all citizens to become informed voters to vote and to keep the electorate up to date about the numerous important issues that you vote on each month here in the chambers. We're very fortunate to live in our community where local government is taken seriously and reported thoroughly by our print and other media. We thank you very much. Would Michael Burns and the East High School men's basketball team please come forward? Also, President Jeffrey R. Adair and legislator Carrie Andrews. Whereas on March 6, 2010, at the Blue Cross Arena, located in Rochester, New York, the East High School varsity boys basketball team, led by coach Daryl Barley, handily defeated the McQueen, McQuaid Jesuit varsity boys basketball team, 76-53, to win the Section 5 Class AA-2 title. And whereas the East High School varsity boys basketball team continued their playoff winning streak by claiming the Section 5 Class AA title after defeating Rush Henrietta 75 to 62, an impressive victory that qualified them for the New York State Western Regional AA Championship in Buffalo, New York. And whereas on March 13, 2010, the formidable East High School varsity boys basketball team held off the Jamestown Red Raiders 50 to 49 to win the Western Regional Class AA Championship advancing them to the New York State AA semifinals, a feat not achieved since the school's 1989-1990 season, when Coach Barley was a player for East High. And whereas throughout their incredible 19-6 season, the members of the East High varsity boys basketball team proved to be powerhouse players who, in the face of competition, worked together, demonstrating a dedication to teamwork and discipline. And whereas the East High School varsity boys basketball team, under the leadership of Coach Barley, has achieved athletic excellence and exhibited sportsmanship, great heart, hard work, and determination. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Adair, President, and Carrie M. Andrews, Assistant Democratic Leader, on behalf of the entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby honor the East High School varsity boys basketball team for their successful season and winning the Western Regional Class AA Championship. can't play anymore, but uh, <laughs> I'm just happy uh, to be a part of this this program here. Uh, this year we had some very, very good guys who, uh, who came to work and were de dedicated to the team. Uh, also, we have great coaches, great administrators uh, who support us, and uh, we're going to accept this award on behalf of our administrators, our athletes, and our coaches. Thank you.
a deputy will assist you in approaching the lectern. Please use the center aisle. I will call three names at a time. Please come forward and be prepared to address the legislature when your name is called. Each speaker will have two minutes and only two minutes in which to address the members. Please conclude when the timer sounds and exit through the clerk's office. Our first three speakers will be Thomas Gregory, to be followed by Sonia Rodriguez, to be followed by Debbie Bonanimo. Pardon me? Bonanimo, excuse me. I'd like to just say a few words about the, mo or the movement that seems to be going on throughout the state in reducing government, uh, that consolidation of government. And even I understand there was a motion that was put before the legislature to reduce the number of persons here in our legislature. It's been my experience over a long period of time that actually having access to you is a very important thing. When you think about the fact that in the absence of actual people who we elect to represent us, who's going to fill that vacuum? The fewer there are of you, the fewer opportunities persons like myself, and I'm sure there's many other persons in the community, have of, of accessing you. And also accessing the, you know, representing the various different views for each legislator, legislator in this particular, in this chamber, represents a different constituency and a different agenda and different politic, political views, different economic views. So I would certainly say that in the, con in the context of the recent uh, movement we've seen at Seneca Falls and in Brockport, that perhaps this legislature make it an agenda item, but basically because you are an extension of the state legislature to form an opinion and bring that opinion to the state legislature, hopefully in opposition to consolidation of government. I think when we start to look around what's really where our costs really are, we might be, find that many of the costs of g doing government today isn't due to you, it's actually due to people like myself. People who basically have a responsibility, maybe sometimes do not fulfill it, our obligations as citizens. Point being that we're the ones who should be reformed. I hope that this legislative assembly stays the way it is, and I hope that we maintain the types of boundaries that we've maintained throughout the, the history of uh, the political history of the state of New York. One thing that should be kept in mind, in my opinion, is that the views and the agendas of a town are much different than of a city or of a consolidated government, okay? I mean, bottom line is I'm saying we have different ways of different needs. Point being, let's keep government the way it is. Thank you. Sonia? Sonia Rodriguez? Okay. Debbie Bonamo, please come forward. Good evening. My name is Debbie Bonema, and I'm a user of the self-directed attendant service program that is currently being provided by um, the Center for Disability Rights. I'm here speaking as myself. I'm here to, to discuss my concerns and my frustrations with the voice recognition system that is being implemented by Monroe County. Um, I have been not only, I've been a supervisor of this program um, for, well, over since 2002. And I've been um, able to help people um, manage their own attendant program um, without any, in any occurrences or problems, um, basically overseeing how the, um, a time sheet is taken care of, how the person's getting assistance, and so forth. So I've been able to implement the program without any problem. And if there has been anything at all, it isn't something that isn't able to easily be taken care of. Um, but currently, the, the program that cu it currently has a voice recognition system, which is 
I think very intrusive because the focus is it's for the attendance in the program is to not no longer to get to the person that they're assisting in the home, but to get to that phone to call in because they're afraid they're going to be docked or miss um, getting their name on for payroll. So rather than them coming in, saying, hi, how are you? Do you need something? The first thing I do is I end up handing them the phone um, because of their call in. Um, the other problem is I also need to get off the phone if somebody is calling. Um, if, if, if I'm on the phone, they need to get on the phone. So my privacy, my business to take care of my stuff gets in the way because they need to get off on the phone to call in or out. So also rearranging my schedule to know when to tell somebody, um, you know, how to meet me, when to meet me. And also um, it's cost prohibitive because the person basically has to have a cell phone with them. I'm fortunate that I can do that. I don't know how much longer I will. And if I don't have that cell phone to have them be able to call in or out when they need to, then I'm going to be tied to my home. So um, there's a lot more people here to, to, to speak, but those are basically my, my concerns, and I'll be glad to leave my address. Thank you. Our next three speakers, Faradine Spears, to be followed by Carmen Hernandez, to be followed by Bertha Smith Israel. Please come forward. Faradine Spears, Carmen Hernandez, Bertha Smith Israel. Are they here? No? Okay, let's go with Shelly Perrin to be followed by Kathy Pataliano, to be followed by Michael Leroy. Please come forward, the next three speakers. Shelly Perrin. Shelly Perrin. I'm talking about the phone call-in system. I, I don't think uh, like my it's right that my tenants have to call in and out this undermines my abilities as a CV pass supervisor you just want me to read it all? Yeah. I am on a fixed income and now have to pay for a monthly cell phone bill just so I can do my normal daily activities 
I think you should have to pay for every consumer to have a free cell phone with unlimited talk if you continue to have their attendance use this stupid and unethical call-in system. Another thing, I don't think it's fair to me as a consumer to have my attendants come in right away and run to the phone in the morning because I have to use the restroom. But if they don't call in right away, they will forget and not get paid. The phone system is unreliable. Many a times my attendants have tried to call in and out and have not been able to get through due to network being busy. It frustrates me that my attendants have to constantly repeat themselves to check in and out. No one else but CDR has to use this unreliable system. My name is Kathy Cajuano, and I'm speaking as an attendant who works in the Consumer Directed Personal Assistance Program. But before I address the issues that are of concern to me regarding this program, I'd like to ask this legislature to adopt a policy that allows foreign language residents of Monroe County access to interpreters for those meetings, for these meetings upon reasonable request. Within the Consumer Directed Personal Assistance Program, there are many Spanish speaking attendants and supervisors. A number of these people would have liked to have spoken tonight but we're unable to because a service like this is not yet in place. I urge you to consider this request so that all people who wish to be heard will be heard. Regarding the Consumer Directed Personal Assistance Program, the Monroe County Department of Human Services Home Health Care Services Unit has implemented a call-in, call-out system for personal care attendants hired into the Consumer Directed Personal Assistance Program. This program violates the very spirit of what is meant by Consumer Directed. It takes the control away from the consumer and puts it in the hands of a bureaucracy that has no vested interest in the care of the consumer. By implementing this program, the Home Care Services Unit makes it very clear they believe the consumer is either A, incapable of running their own program, or B, committing fraud by billing for services that were not rendered. The call-in system fails every day in every way. It does not recognize clearly dictated numbers. It hangs up on the user and it puts a financial burden on some consumers. In order to comply, they have been forced to purchase cell phones and cell phone calling plans, something they would not otherwise have done. Finally, by demanding the use of the call-in system, the county has blurred the lines as to who is employing the attendant. If I'm calling into the county, what responsibility does the county have to me? I urge this legislature to call upon the Monroe County Home Care Services Unit and instruct them to immediately stop forcing the use of this call-in system. Hello, I'm Michael Leroy. Um, I'm here speaking about the same phone system. Uh, they've pretty much said everything that there is. Uh, the only thing I can project that hasn't been said is uh, the fact that, like, if you call, if if my attendant calls in at 12 o'clock midnight, that's you know that's still the same day. But if they call in at 12:01, that's considered another day. Now, according to our program, they can only work six days in a row, not seven. So if they call in just a couple minutes late because the, because the machine doesn't recognize their voice, they have to keep calling back, then it's considered seven days for them. And I've almost lost one of my best attendants to that because that's happened to him three times because he gets off at midnight. Now, that's a huge problem in, in the system in itself. But the system itself just does not work very well at all. I'm sure all of you have dealt with uh, the voice automated uh, call-in systems where you call in like a, a customer service thing and you have to say, uh, say two to get this, say three to get that. And you'll say a number and it get, gets the wrong number and sends you somewhere else. Well, it's the same type of system. 
and it's very failure. It's it, infallible. So I would say that you should definitely get rid of it because it is a major hindrance. I've never had a problem doing it the way we've been doing it. I've been a, a consumer for seven years, and until this year, I've never had a problem. And now I've almost lost one of my best attendants to the system. Thank you. Our next three speakers will be Romeo DeLucia, to be followed by Deborah Dominico, to be followed by Susan Stahl. Please come forward. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Deborah? Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Deborah Dumanico, and I feel as though I've lost all control over my attendance because. I get nothing from the county that shows what time they called in and called out. And I feel as if I'm being stripped of all my supervisory authority. Thank you. Susan Stahl, and our last speaker will be Charlotte Ross. Hi, I'm Susan Stahl. Thank you for holding. Um, I'm calling. I'm talking again about the phone system that's recently been um, implemented by the Home Care Unit of Monroe County. Um, I use attendance service for everything that I do. Um, it, it allows me to work, it allows me to be a homeowner um, in Gates. I've been in the Consumer Directed Program for over six years without any issues. I run my own program and have been approved by the county to run that program that meets all of my needs. Um, the program is, the vendor for the program is the Center for Disability Rights and I provide them with a timesheet that details exactly when my attendant is working and when she isn't working. Okay, with that timesheet, we bill Medicaid. Okay, the Monroe County Home Care Unit has approved me to run the program, but now we have to use a home health verification system, um, and it's a requirement. I don't have a choice. I haven't been prosecuted for anything but I have to have them use it. Okay, so they're required to call in and out. It's sort of like if you had a business and you have staff people and they have a timesheet and they give you a timesheet every Friday. No, that's not good enough. They can't just give you a timesheet every Friday and you, b you believe that they actually worked for you. They have to call an outside entity to prove that they worked. How is that fair to you as a, as a business owner in my example or to me as a person with a disability who's just trying to live my life? Okay. Now the other thing that I want to say is that the system is based on the fact that it is believed that there's Medicaid fraud going on in everyone's home. Well, I can tell you right now, it's not. It makes me feel like I'm a criminal. It makes me feel like everyone is assuming that because I can't do the personal care that everyone else can do, I'm committing fraud or my attendant is committing fraud. I can tell you that I would say 99.999% of the people who are trying to live their lives 
using this service are not committing fraud. Thank you very much. Charlotte Ross. <clears throat> this concludes the public forum. At this time, we'll recess the April 13, 2010 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature for the purpose of convening the Pure Waters Administration Hold on. Hold on. Board. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. President. We have one okay. more speaker. Stephanie, please come forward. And our last speaker will be Edna Zabala. Please come forward. Good evening, everybody. 
Um, she's going to be right here to help me with the English. It, that's not my perfect language, so I'm going to try to do my best, but she's going to be right here to help me, okay? One of the things is the problem of this um, situation is the language for the Spanish speaker. The system doesn't understand too much the accent of the Spanish speaker, and sometimes I think the... Que le, que le está el respeto a las personas que no saben hablarlo. But she says she says that um, it's a disrespect to the Spanish speakers that doesn't the system doesn't understand. So to give you another point of view, and in this situation currently, the system gives you the instructions in Spanish and then it gives you English numbers to repeat back. So the the attendants who don't speak any English at all are forced to say numbers in Spanish who to, to you may seem very easy, but for someone who doesn't speak English, it's not. So the system will not recognize their voice, and she thinks it's disrespectful. Um, one of the point is um, the money. So I used to pay, I'm talking for my father. He's 90 years old. I don't bring it because he's not doing um, some time too good. So the money, I used to pay $10 for a cellular phone, and then I could have... Um, communication with my with the service and um, who's working in my, in my father's house and right now he got to pay seventy dollar for the telephone to have this service well, that's one of the points some people doesn't have um, the money to pay that second um, I think it's a little bit complicated because sometimes when you try to talk and start to talk the, the machine right away said they don't know what you're saying and they hung up so you lose your time, time that you can be with the, with the person who needs you because when you come to work, sometimes it's in the middle of the different time of the day and these people need somebody to take care. So it, it takes um, a lot of time. So that's one of the points and the most important thing that I think is I feel like a, you are like a house arrest without making a, a crime. And I think these people have some limitations, and I think they don't need no more limitation. Because in a case that you want to go out vacation, how you going to deal with that? If you have this system, how are you going to deal with this system? So I think these people don't need no more limitation. They have enough. So think about that, and thank you very much. This concludes the public forum. At this time, we'll recess the April 13, 2010 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature for the purpose of convening the Pure Waters Administration Board for the Rochester Pure Waters, Aronicoit Bay South Central, Northwest Quadrant, and the gates Charlie ogden Sewer Districts. The clerk will please note the attendance and read the items on the agenda. PWAB Item 1, Referral 10-99, Approving Increase. Moved by Mr. Cassetti, second by Mr. Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there's no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion carries. PWAB item two, referral 10-101, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there's no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion carries. PWAB item number three, referral 10-103. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion carries. PWAB item number four, referral 10-1. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. PWAB item number five, referral 10-1. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. PWAB item number six, referral 10-107. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, motion carries. PWAB item number seven, referral 10-109. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion carries. PWAB item number eight, referral 
Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. All opposed, motion carries. We will now recess the Rochester Pier Waters around the Quite Bay South Central Northwest Quadrant in the Gates Child Ogden Sewer Districts and adjourn the Pier Water Administration Board. The April 13, 2010 meeting of the legislature will now reconvene. We will proceed with the considerations of motions, resolutions, and notice. Will the clerk, please read the first item on the agenda. Ange agenda item number one, referral 10 75, approving. Moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Yes, sir, Legislator Monero. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, um, I'd just like to know through you um, whether the administration knows how long this company, uh, Rochester Midland, has been um, in the 29th Legislative District of Monroe County. Uh, through the chair, they've been in the uh, district for over 30 years. Mr. President, I'd also like to know uh, if there was, I know there was some follow-up to my questions about uh, the environmental impact of the adjacent property, if they had ascertained any information as to the nature of the envi environmental issues. Through the chair, no. Mr. President, um, I just uh, would like to explain my, uh, I, my plan on voting no on this uh, resolution um, for a number of reasons. One, obviously, um, the moving of this uh, particular business from its current location will have an adverse impact on the residents of my district, um, leaving um, a, another vacant property um, and another industrial environmental hazard that I think uh, we aren't sure what the environmental impact will be long term on the people of my district. Thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? If not, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Oh. I guess we're going to do a roll call vote. Okay. Uh, Dr. Quattro. Yeah. Mr. Bronson? Yes. Ms. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Antelli? Yes. Mr. Barker? Yes. Mr. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Cassetti? Yes. Mr. Colby? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Mrs. Draw? Yes. Mr. Eckel? Yes. Mr. Esposito? Yes. Mr. Gamble? Mr. Gamina, Mr. Haney, Mr. Hanna, yes, Mr. Heider, Mr. Howland, Ms. Kaylee is excused, Mr. Lee, Mr. Lightfoot, Mr. Monero, Mr. McCann, Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Racco? Yes. Mr. Tucciarello? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Valerio? Yes. Mr. Yolovich? Yes. President Adair? Yes. Twenty-two to six. Motion carries. Item number two, referral 10-76, accepting grant from. Second. Moved by Legislator Howland, second by Legislator Danielli. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. 
All opposed? Motion carries. Item number three, referral 10-77, accepting grant. Moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there's no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Referral, excuse me, item I'm number sorry. four, referral 10-78, authorizing contract. Moved by Legislator Holland, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number five, referral 10-79, accepting grant. Moved by Legislator Hanna, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, referral 10-80, accepting grant from. Moved by Legislator Hanna, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion at this time, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven, referral 10-81, authorizing contract. Moved by Legislator Hanna, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight, referral 10-82, accepting grant from. Moved by Legislator Hanna, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number nine, referral 10-83, amending 2010. Moved by Legislator Hanna, second by Legislators Antelli and Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Item number 10, referral 10-83BR, resolution. Moved by Legislator Hanna, seconded by Legislators Antelli and Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11, referral 10-84, authorizing contracts. Moved by Legislator Valerio, seconded by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator Andrews. Thank you, Mr. President. And through you to the administration, I just have a few questions regarding this referral and, and the referral that follows it. Um, my general understanding is that these two referrals authorize contracts as well as additional funding of about $1.2 million to repair some leaks um, in the Penguin exhibit. But I, I guess um, if you could just forgive me and just try to explain this to me as if I'm a six-year-old and, and say, just try to explain how it was that the Penguin tank, which my understanding of it is, is a tank that holds about 15,000 gallons of water itself. How did that tank go to lose, again, my understanding, 50,000 gallons of water a day in the past few years through the president? Through you, Mr. Mr. President, um, the penguin exhibit is a 15,000 gallon uh, pool. Um, underneath that uh, 15,000 gallon pool uh, is a series of pipes, um, manifolds, um, elbows, um, which all lead down to pumps, um, which recirculate the water around. Um, apparently, um, the problem that we uh, are experiencing lies underneath the gunite structure of the pool itself. We have worked with various consultants over the last few years to try to isolate um, the location of the leak and have been able, unable to do so. Um, we have found through phase one of this uh, comprehensive project at the Rocky Coast exhibit um, that the penguin uh, exhibit is losing a significant amount of water based on the monitoring of uh, uh, water through the pumps that the new system allows us to do. So 
what we are proposing to do uh, based on um, the advice of our consultants is to um, dig up the uh, current pool and um, go down and isolate the uh, leak, probably coming from um, part of that piping infrastructure underneath, and uh, re make the repair. And then in the process, um, while we're in there um, fixing this, to um, uh, make some enhancements to the exhibit that would be beneficial to both uh, the penguins and the uh, visitors to the zoo. And Mr. President, how long did you say that you've known about the leak, approximately? Through you, Mr. President, um, the leak started out um, a few years ago, um, and at that time we came to the legislature with this initial project, and we advised um, the legislature of the leak at that time. Um, as I said, through phase one of the project, we were able to isolate where the leak was exactly coming from, and it's from the penguin exhibit. Um, over the intervening years, we've um, continued to lose water, to the point of the high point on Christmas Eve of 2009, uh, we lost 50,000 gallons. Um, and at that time, we uh, shut down the uh, uh, pool, and it's currently uh, filled with wood chips. Um, so we, the good news is we're not losing any more water uh, at this time until the um, uh, repair is made and the leak is fixed. And through you, Mr. President, um, you said that leak was, dis or the, the location of the leak was discovered during that work during phase one. Was it not possible to, or did you feel it wasn't possible to move up that work that was done during phase one if you were aware of the leak prior to phase one starting? Through you, Mr. President, um, no, because until we finished phase one, which um, uh, incorporated the new uh, pumps and the monitoring systems, um, we knew that we had a leak at the Rocky Coast exhibit, which consists <coughs> of three different pools, 95,000-gallon polar bear pool, 105,000-gallon sea lion pool, and the 15,000-gallon penguin pool. Um, after phase one, with the um, incorporation of the new pumps and monitoring system, we were able to isolate uh, that leak uh, directly to the penguin pool. Through the present, my question was just about whether or not it was possible to start phase one earlier. I mean, if you've been aware of the leak for years, would, would it have been possible to amend the CIP or, or however the project came about to start it earlier to, to not have resulted in so much water being lost over so many years? Through you, Mr. President, we initiated phase one as soon as we could. Okay. Thank you. And um, again, because I just don't, I don't know very much about this, do you have any idea where the water went? When it was, when it, the 50,000 gallons that was lost, where would that go? Through you, Mr. President, um, no, we, we do not have any idea where the water uh, went. It obviously went somewhere uh, into the ground. Uh, we have the advantage of being on high ground at the Seneca Park Zoo um, in a natural river gorge. Um, we're assuming it went somewhere um, down. Uh, we have not experienced any sinkholes um, or infrastructure problems throughout the zoo, which we continue to monitor because it, it, it is something that, um, you know, we, we were frankly concerned about, and it'll be very interesting once we break through the gun night and, um, you know, take a look at and see, um, you know, where this water's been going. Um, through you, Mr. President, you mentioned that there are three pools as part of this exhibit, and I know we've talked a lot about the penguin pool. <coughs> mentioned the polar bear pool. Is there also an otter pool? Is that correct? Through you, Mr. President, uh, no, the otter pool is part of the um, eco center. Okay. Um, do you have any, are there leaks in any of the other pools, including the otter pool or the polar bear pool, that this project is going to fix? <coughs> Through you, Mr. President, um, the um, two other pools in the Rocky Coast exhibit the polar bear pool and the sea lion pool um, do not have leaks. Um, as I 
uh, indicated to Legislator O'Brien at the Ways and Means Committee uh, meeting, we have detected very recently that the otter pool uh, does have a leak. Um, we are trying to isolate the um, uh, location of that leak and quite frankly uh, use some of the knowledge that we pick up um, from the repairs of the uh, penguin pool and um, you know, make those repairs to the otter uh, pool as soon as we can. And through the present, so those repairs are not part of this um, project at this point in time. How, how much water is being lost through the otter pool? Uh, through you, Mr. President, this uh, time we're estimating about 8,600 gallons per day. And through you, Mr. President, then you anticipate once you learn from this project that you'll come back to the legislature to make a recommendation on how to fix that leak, or is, or is that an appropriate amount of water to be lost? Through, through you, Mr. Uh, President, that is not an appropriate amount of water to, to be lost. And later on in the uh, agenda, um, we have uh, sought um, a correction of our tax bill uh, to be reimbursed for um, part of the sewer um, charges that we've been um, charged for that leak. Um, but we do intend to um, use the knowledge we uh, gained through the uh, Penguin exhibit and come back with um, a remediation plan for that otter pool uh, as soon as possible. And through the present, were those two pools by any chance created at the same time? I mean, do you have any concern about the contractors or the work that was done if both of the pools are leaking a rather large amount of water? Through you, Mr. President, um, they were not done at the same time. The um, uh, Eco Center uh, in the Genesee Trails area um, is uh, an older exhibit. Through the present, but do you have any concerns about the work that was done by the contractors in these two pools? Through you, Mr. President, um, not really. You know, we are in a um, uh, northeastern climate um, with, uh, you know, freezing and thaws. Um, these pools are operated uh, year round, and, um, you know, I, th I think that after 12 years, um, of where that uh, penguin pool has been running on a constant basis, that um, you know that is something that um, could be um, foreseen. You know when that exhibit was put in, that you might eventually have some leakage. Um, you know as far as the uh, um, otter pool, um, you know that's been there even longer, and I think that you know the cost of maintaining these exhibits and um, providing maintenance after a number of years, especially on outdoor water-based exhibits, is to be expected. Um, through the present, have you by chance talked to other zoos to see if they've experienced similar problems with their pools over, over this sort of time period? Through you, Mr. President, yes, we have talked to um, other zoos throughout the country, and, you know, that is um, one of the pitfalls of having water-based um, uh, exhibits is that from time to time you do have to uh, um, incorporate this kind of maintenance into um, the uh, uh, exhibitory repairs. Um, I think we are quite fortunate as I listed off the uh, uh, gallons per exhibit uh, that it was the relatively small uh, penguin exhibit that we experienced this problem and not one of the larger pools. Thank you. And just a couple more questions. Um, I understand that one of the other referrals in this evening, the county will be reimbursed for about $100,000 of costs from, the, from Pure Waters. Do you have any idea, though, how much we've been charged by the Water Authority uh, to maintain the leaky exhibit over the past few years? Through you, Mr. President. Um, we estimate that um, if we continued uh, to lose at that high rate, it would be about $50,000 per year. But that is actually water that we uh, did take from the system. And do you have any idea, though, of up to date how much, you've, how much it's cost? Through you, Mr. President, um, no. I could tell you that prospectively, if we did not make the repair, um, that it would be about $50,000 a year. Okay. And, and finally, uh, through the President, after the repairs are completed, is it your expectation and hope that there will be no leakage from, from this penguin pool? 
Through you, Mr. President, absolutely. Um, that, that would be our expectation from the, um, uh, the repairs that were made. Um, in, Legislator O'Brien did point out um, at the uh, Ways and Means Committee um, that, you know, pools of any size, you know, do um, lose some amount of water volume on a daily basis. Um, and, um, you know, this is through evaporation, through um, backwashing your filtration system, uh, through a splash factor, and, um, you know, that's relatively low compared to the amount of water um, you know, we're losing and we expect to uh, significantly improve um, the amount of the uh, water loss. However, you are going to um, lose an amount of water per day um, in a pool that does not leak at all just through those other factors that I described. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously we would expect to lose some water. It's just, the, you know, the quantity of 50,000 gallons a day for a tank that's 15,000 is, is too high. Through through you, through you, Mr. President, that's correct. And um, we estimate that that um, factor that I uh, described before would be about 1,500 gallons per day that would be acceptable. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the information this evening. And certainly I'll be supporting the referral because the repairs are obviously much needed and hopefully uh, won't happen again. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Legislator Andrews. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Eckel. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. President, to the administration, um, 50,000 gallons a day is, is quite a, a large amount of water. I would like to ask, um, are there any chemicals that are put into that water to, um, to clean it for the penguins? And if so, um, is there anything we need to be concerned about for, say, an environmental impact of that amount of chemical being leaked directly and without going through pool water? Through you, Mr. President, it's a great question. It's one that I actually asked um, at the time. Um, no, the water that was going into those pools because of the, um, the loss of water at the time was not treated um, because we were putting in um, water right from the tap that really didn't need to be treated since it wasn't being recirculated. So it would be the same water that's coming out of your uh, tap at home. Thank you very much. I was just concerned. Is there any other discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no other discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, referral 10-84-BR. Moved by Legislator Valerio, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 13, referral 10-85, authorizing it. Moved by Legislator Hanna, seconded by Legislators Antelli, Colby, and Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion at this time, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 14, referral 10-86, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Antelli, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 15, referral 10-87, authorizing inter... Moved by Legislator Antelli, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion at this time, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 16, referral 10-88. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 17, referral 10-89. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 18, referral 10-90. Second. 
Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Opposed? Item carries. Item number 19, referral 10-91. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? 19.2. Yes. And is there anyone from the administration that would like to give us an explanation for 19.2? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this um, uh, proposed amendment is being offered to the legislature. <clears throat> this is at the request of the state of New York, which uh, informed us after the Human Services Committee meeting uh, last cycle that the grant amount and the term of the grant were being reduced. And so we're requesting that the legislature uh, reduce um, the term and the grant amount accordingly. And this was uh, communicated to the legislature in a letter, I believe, on April 2nd. Thank you. Is there any discussion on the amendment? We need a motion for the amendment and a second. Oh, I'm sorry, did we need a second on that? Second. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. So I have a motion by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Okay, now is there any discussion on the amendment? Seeing there is no discussion on the amendment, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Amendment carries. Now back to the main motion. Is there any discussion on the main motion? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 20, referral 10-92. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 21, referral 10-93. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 22, referral 10-94. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 23, referral 10-95. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, second by Legislators Draw and Dan Yelly. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion at this time, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 24, referral 10-96. Moved by Legislator Draw, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Legislator McCann. I think I broke it here, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I rise uh, uh, because I have a unique opportunity. Uh, I would like to take a moment to uh, speak about this referral and uh, the uh, the early intervention in the preschool uh, special education program uh, because I'm in the unusual position of uh, being able to speak firsthand uh, about uh, about a referral I have firsthand knowledge uh, my, uh, my my wife and I have two children our, our smallest son David uh, will be turning five in August he uh, has been in the uh, early intervention program uh, for, for two go-arounds First, when he was uh, uh, eight months old, we uh, had a concern that uh, he was uh, delayed in terms of sitting up and uh, some physical, physical issues related to that. We expressed those concerns to our doctor. Uh, she gave us a referral to the uh, early intervention program. Uh, we, we met with uh, people from the early intervention program. He was evaluated. Uh, there was a determination made that he qualified for services and uh, he had the benefit of a physical therapist and uh, we saw results that were uh, uh, very pleasing to us and very remarkable for us uh, you know he, he went from uh, not being able to stand on his own in October of, of the year he learned to walk to, to basically being able to walk by Christmas and uh, that that was something we were very grateful for obviously 
but uh, as a result of being in that program uh, and, and being in the early intervention program, there were other concerns that, uh, that we had. Uh, those concerns uh, uh, included primarily a delay in speech. Uh, and, and as a result of those delays, uh, we got further into the early intervention program and uh, uh, he was evaluated again. Uh, there were concerns uh, raised by the early intervention staff and during that evaluation process, uh, we made an appointment for him to go to the Kirsch uh, Center and uh, he was diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder in uh, June of 2007. Uh, and w what's remarkable from my perspective is he was 22 months old when he had that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, that diagnosis, which uh, uh, personally, he's, he's the only child I'm aware of who's had that uh, diagnosis uh, uh, before the age of two. Typically, uh, you know, it's a little bit later than that, but uh, I absolutely credit our involvement in the early intervention program for that early diagnosis. And once that diagnosis was made, uh, he was uh, put into the uh, the special education program, and he's had the benefit. Uh, we're going to be winding down when the uh, when the school year comes. He, he's going to qualify for uh, uh, special summer classes. But when the school year begins in September, he will age out of that program, and, and he'll be going into the school-based program. But uh, he's had the benefit of that uh, of, of those services for three years, and I I can say firsthand the results that. Uh, that we've seen, he, he's still nonverbal. Uh, clearly, has issues that we're dealing with, but uh, without a doubt, I can say this program has made a tremendous difference in his life uh, and in and, and, and our family's life, uh, lives in terms of uh, helping prepare him uh, for for his uh, uh, educational setting when he goes into uh, uh, in, into the school-based system in September. Uh, and, and just to give to give people an idea of of the services and the programs that uh, are available. We have monthly team meetings uh, uh, with all of the people who work with, uh, with David. Uh, there's a school-based program. Uh, he goes to uh, the St. James Preschool, which is part of the BOCES one. And, and looking on the providers here, I, I have the benefit of knowing uh, uh, several of them and several of the agencies. Um, very, we're very, very pleased with all of them, but, but uh, th those team meetings that we have uh, once a month, there are uh, probably 12 to 13 people who have contact with him during the course of the week. Uh, there, there's a school-based team uh, that, that works with him, and then there's also the home team, which uh, which pr provides services to him at uh, at a daycare provider that uh, that, that we pay for our private uh, private pay uh, daycare center. Uh, and and you know he he gets on a bus at 7:30 in the morning. He's the first one out of the house. And a lot of days, he's the last one home. Uh, and for, for a little guy who, uh, you know, started this before he was uh, uh, his, his uh, uh, well, right around his second birthday, and, and having done this for three years, uh, you know, uh, it, it really has done wonders for him. And I don't have to speak. I think everybody here knows when uh, uh, David first had the diagnosis, I, uh, you, you look on the internet, and I think the number is one out of uh, roughly every 150 children are born with autism. Uh, I heard uh, uh, a radio ad the other day. It's one out of every 110 now. Uh, it used to be out of that 150, it was one out of every 90 was uh, uh, a boy, so one out of every 90 boys has this diagnosis. I would assume that number is also lower now, too, because it uh, uh, disproportionately affects, uh, affects uh, uh, boys uh, in, in terms of that diagnosis. But uh, you know, again, I'm in an unusual situation having first-hand knowledge, detailed first-hand knowledge. I wanted to share it with you. Uh, you know, the, the people who do what they do and the names of the people on this list, uh, uh, i to be honest, I don't know what the pay scale is for these people, uh, but just you, you can tell they don't do this for the money. They do it for the satisfaction uh, of, of being able to help people. And, uh, you know, it, it's a very complicated, a very complex system. Uh, my, my wife and I, between us, have, uh, uh, I, hate, I hate to admit this, but about 40 years' experience in government. Uh, uh, and, and, and this system at times has, has been confusing, overwhelming. There's terminologies and, and processes that you wouldn't be familiar with if you weren't involved in them. And, uh, you know, these, these people have made uh, a real difference for us. 
uh, this program has made a real difference for us, and it's really not that often that uh, we in this chamber get the opportunity to stand up here and uh, talk about something that we should be proud of, something that we do right uh, as, as a government, and um, you know something that, uh, that we can all take pride in. So uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to share that experience. I felt compelled to do that and, uh, and, and share the, the one person's perspective of, uh, of uh, the, the good that this program does. So thank you. Is there any other discussion at this time? Legislator Haney. Mr. President, at the Human Services Committee meeting, a request was made for some information regarding um, how much was paid to some of these vendors, and we received that list uh, today, for which I'm, I'm grateful. And I've been trying to reconcile the, the two lists. And the list we received today of the payments, the very first provider is an entity that's listed as A and E. That's the letter A and the letter E. And they received $3,269,000 last year. And I guess it's calendar year 2009. There is no such entity on, the, on attachment A uh, to the referral. And I'm wondering what is who is A and E, and are they, or is it an abbreviation, and I, for a name that's on attachment A, or is is it a dropped vendor? Or? Uh, through you, Mr. President, A and E is the transportation vendor, uh, and uh, so is uh, sort of in a different category uh, of service providers, if you will, and I think that that explains why. Uh, A&E doesn't appear on attachment A associated with the, uh, the uh, original referral. That is a list of, uh, if you will, the medical providers uh, the, the, uh, uh, that, that serve the children. Uh, I suppose you could argue that since A&E is a contractor, uh, it might have been included on that list as well, but it was in a slightly different category. And, uh, I noticed medical motor service is on attachment A, I believe. No, I'll take that back. I guess medical motor service is not on attachment A. So, so the attachment A does not include any of the transportation entities? Uh, through you, Mr. President, they're the only one. We actually have... Uh, bid this for many years and select, selected a single transportation vendor for these programs. Uh, and when you said that you thought you saw uh, another one on the, uh, on the list, I was pretty sure that there wasn't one there. Well, we did pay medical motor services $465,000 last year in this program, presumably. Through you, Mr. President, I don't have the, uh, the uh, information about last year's payments in front of me right now, but we can certainly uh, get an explanation uh, I guess my, for you. my real question is, so are we saying that the transportation entities do not need to be, are not covered by this legislation, this referral? Is that what we're saying? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So A and E is not on here because they don't need to be on here. Okay. If, as, as, as a follow-up, I mean, if, if presumably all the transportation was being done by A and E, I guess I would be curious as to why in the program last year we paid medical motor service. I mean, it's a fine organization. But if A and E presumably was doing all the work, I guess I'd, ask a question for, for later answering as to why we paid medical motor service $495,000 in the program. Through you, Mr. President, uh, we will find that out and get that information to you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. Yeah. Legislator Andrews. 
Mr. President, and through you to the administration. Just following up on that, I understand that the A and E and other any other transportation provider is is not listed on the 2009 referral, but we're still paying for those costs, correct? They're just not re required here? That's correct. The uh, transportation costs, uh, unfortunately, are a very large portion of the cost of this program. Okay, and through the chair, um, I think you just stated you don't have the 2009 figure per, uh, but if it would be possible to receive um, the, the amount of dollars that was spent on the early intervention program for 2009 to be able to compare it to what this referral authorizes for 2010. Isn't that what we, isn't that what we provided? It's not through the chair. It's not I'm sorry. Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Uh, President, are you asking what the transportation costs were in the previous year? No, through the President. The total cost of all the programs. They're, they're listed individually, but they're not totaled. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We seem to be having problems with microphones tonight. We got a big budget deficit, everybody. Let's be careful, all right? Thank you. Is there any other discussion on this item? Seeing there is none at this time, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 25, referral 10-97. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Dan Yelly. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Item number 26, referral 10-98. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Dan Yelly for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 27, referral 10-98. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 28, referral 10-98. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All those in favor, in, uh, indicate by saying aye. Thank you. All those opposed, item carries. Item number 29, referral 10-100. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 30, referral 10-100. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 31, referral 10-100. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. Item number 32, referral 10-102. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele, for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 33, referral 10-102. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Item carries. Next item. Item number 34, referral 10-102. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 35, referral 10. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 36, referral 10-104. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, seconded by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 37, referral 10-104. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 38, referral 10-104. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele for introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 39, referral 10-106. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All in favor? Opposed? The item carries. Next item. Item number 40, referral 10-106. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All in favor? 
Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 41, referral 10 dash. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 42, referral 10 dash 1. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is a tabling motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 43, referral 1. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, seconded by Legislator Daniele. This is a set the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Item carries. Next item. Item number 44, referral 10 11. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, seconded by Legislator Daniele for the introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 45, referral 10 110. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, seconded by Legislator Daniele. This is the tabling motion. All in favor? Opposed. Item carries. Next item. Item number 46, referral 10-110. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. This is to set the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item carries. Well done, Legislator Cassetti. <laughs> item number 47, referral 112, authorize a contract. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All opposed, item carries. Item number 48, referral 10-113. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, second by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, item carries. Item number 49, referral 10 dash. <laughs> Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. Item number 50, referral 10 dash 116. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. All opposed, item carries. Item number 51, referral 10-117. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion at this time, all in favor indicate by saying aye. All those opposed, item carries. Item number 52, referral 10 dash Moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion at this time, all those in, uh, in favor, please indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, item carries. Item number 53, referral 10-119. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, item carries. Item number 54, referral. Moved by Legislator Gamina, second by Legislator Quattro. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, item carries. Item number 55, referral 10-121. Moved by Vice President Barker, second by Legislator Howland. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. Item number 56, referral 10 122. Moved by Legislator Daniele, second by Legislator Yolovich. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. Item number 57, referral 10 123. Moved by Legislator Cassetti, seconded by Legislator Daniele. Is there any discussion at this time? Seeing that there is no discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Item carries. And that puts us at 57. And before I say this, uh, I get to this part of it, uh, I would just like to recognize former County Legislator Jack Driscoll from the district. Jack? <laughs> Great. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> really, Legislator Esposito? All right, go ahead. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President, and uh, especially thank you very much for the kind words at the beginning of tonight's meeting. I can uh, tell you I'm already going to be in need of the luck that you offered me. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to make it here this evening, but I decided to come because I'm already looking for excuses not to change diapers. Uh, <laughs> but I hope you uh, indulge this new father for one more matter of business tonight. Um, as you all know, uh, this month's cycle included a referral that I was proud to introduce that would have allowed the people of this county to vote to reduce the size of this honorable body from 29 members to 15 members, thereby saving about $500,000 a year and at least 25% of this legislative budget, perhaps allowing Point us to order, get some new microphones. Uh, Point of order. Point of order. Uh, this, this item is not on our agenda, so it should not be discussed in any way, shape, or form at this meeting. Uh, Thank you very went much, through the, Mr. Went through the committee I, uh, process uh, and uh, was handled uh, at committee, it failed in committee, so it should not and be considered And I'd like to speak to that committee for us. Mr. President, just take a moment. <clears throat> Point of order takes precedence, Mr. President. Yeah, I, um, I agree. Uh, Le Legislator Esposito, uh, where are we going with this? Well, I, I'm happy to, to sum up. Any legislator at any time can make a motion to suspend the rules. I understand that. This is a motion to suspend the rules, and, and Mr. I heard Esposito nothing about a motion to suspend the rules. We're not suspending the rules. He is making the motion. The point of order was raised before he actually made any motion. Need a, need a motion I'm to suspend to the rules to have any President. discussion? I have great respect for our committee process, as Mr. Quattro alluded to, as well as my colleagues on the Agenda Charter Committee. However, given the overwhelming public support of this proposal, I don't think it's right to have three of us be the only arbiters to prevent the public from determining the size have of this you government. Made a motion Therefore, to suspend the rules? I'm asking to move to suspend the rules of this body for the purposes of introducing a referral that would allow there to be a public hearing and a referendum to reduce the size of this legislature from 29 to 15 members. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. We'll go to a roll call vote on it. On the motion to suspend the rules. Dr. Quattro. No. Mr. Bronson. Yes. Ms. Andrews. Yes. Mr. Antelli. No. Mr. Barker. No. Mr. Beebe. No. Mr. Cassetti. Mr. Colby. No. Mr. Daniele. No. Mrs. Draw. Mr. Eckel. Yes. Mr. Esposito. Yes. Mr. Gamble. Yes. Mr. Gamina. No. Mr. Haney. Yes. Mr. Hanna. No. Mr. Hyder. Yes. Mr. Holland. No. Ms. Kaylee is excused. Mr. Lee. Mr. Lightfoot, yes. Mr. Monero, yes. Mr. McCann, no. Mr. O'Brien, yes. Mr. Racco, no. Mr. Tucciarello, yes. Mrs. Valerio, no. Mr. Yolovich, no. President Adair. No. 12 to 16, motion, motion fails. fails. I'd like to uh, move that this honorable body stand adjourned until Tuesday, May 11th, 2010 at 6 p.m. Yeah.